Williams. My project statement was on Archimedes, on whether or not his parabolic mirror idea was plausible and employable as a war defense. See. Little history on Archimedes. He was born in 287 BC, although it's not documented anywhere on an actual born date because his workings wasn't documented for over 350 years later. Um, he was reported to be to died in 212 BC uh, by a Roman soldier. He was actually the soldier was actually coming from Marcellus to um, capture Archimedes to have him to follow him to Marcellus because the Romans were interested in his works. Um, he was killed by this known or this unknown soldier. By the soldier not actually know who he was. Uh, he basically told the soldier, do not mess with my circles, uh, which was, um, I guess, an horrible reason for the soldier just to ram him with a sword. Um, Archimedes was actually traveling to Marcellus after or before the soldier was approaching him with all of his findings and everything, using spheres and mathematical instruments as circles. Uh, he was actually calculating the light reflection from the sun, which is actually later, stayed, later studied throughout this project. Um, some of his major discoveries, which I found of interest and knowledgeable to note, was his Archimedes screw his burning mirrors. It was also called death ray, um, the heat ray. Uh, he had a lever, which was probably also included into the idea of the burning mirrors because he was using the lever to actually catapult a hook after the actual ignition, igniting of the ship to actually sink the ship. Is this a picture over there? Uh, yes, this is the claw. It's to your upper right. Yeah, it's like a, actually like a flying anchor, mm -hmm. and it sticks to the side of the ship, and then he uses pretty much the army of Syracuse to actually uh, crank the catapult back to actually flip the ship. Can you lever? Yeah. Um, your Archimedes. Yeah, the screw. Yeah. yeah. I had a question. So any, any known shape of the, of the, of the, that, Kind of um, there are multiple, uh, Plutarch, or Plu, Pla, Plutarch, he was a okay. philosopher, um, right. not sure, he said okay. it was a, uh, more of a cylindrical, um, apparatus, um, well, it was, the, the shape can be done in a number of ways, uh -huh. the, so it's like a surface and you can cut it from a different surfaces, so I wonder what, if it is known what it was. Oh, I'm not sure. I didn't okay. dig into that. Um, he had, um, I believe it was stated in one of Archimedes' works that I has re was reading upon that he used the lever um, in some instances of draining bay water so the ships couldn't readily approach as fast. Let me see. And then this is my project statement. Uh, you can't really tell, but <laughs> this is supposed to symbolize the parabolic mirror. It just kind of went black after I changed this background. Um, but the idea is having a direct path to a parabolic mirror in order to reflect an incident ray to actually concentrate energy, enough energy to ignite the ship, which is actually, in all realistic, would have caused a um, so many of a meter square hole and the ship would actually sink the ship before that ship would actually ignite and completely burn. These are some ideas and some factors that I took into consideration. Um, I'm sure he took it in more in depth. <laughs> but. Um, he would have had to have, um, which I will show in my Excel um, project, where the more 
it doesn't really uh, necessarily depend on the actual energy because the energy is constant throughout. Um, the actual, when you magnify your parabolic mirrors or your reflected shields, you get two times of that concentration in so many meters squared area, which would actually um, actually validate his works if this is said to be true. Um, another thing, I took into consideration an average of 500 feet whenever I did my Excel. It's not practical because that's pretty close. <laughs> um, he would probably have deployed more defense mechanisms other than just the mirrors. Um, also, another thing is clear skies. Um, later on in the project, you'll see as to why that is. Uh, your time of day, depending on your wavelength and your electromagnetivity, and your various heat content of wood. There was some instances where um, some metals were involved in ships, but mostly back in that time, they were all made of wood. Um, this is just a little thrown together illustration that I did on paint of how the actual um, rays from the sun would actually reflect and converge to a focal point. Um, first off, the law of reflection, this was later more hit upon by uh, Euclid, but Archimedes, or it's earlier. Euclid, um, Archimedes and Euclid's works kind of. Euclid. Euclid. <laughs> um, kind of went together. Archimedes more fine-tuned it. Um, basically, his uh, law of reflection states that for an incident ray upon angle of, I guess, the trajectory, that the same angle for the reflected ray. Um, so that was probably pretty close to what he used. Let's see. This is some of the calculations that I had used in my power in my Excel point to find the actual kind of the maximum locate and the maximum focus or the focus of the point. Um, and again these little red arrows are the just basically illustrating the law of reflection. Um, I got, I guess the, basically the focal point is the curved regions where the distance is parallel, um, where these incident rays would be converging. Um, so I kind of use this idea to back my findings. Now a little bit more of the, into the physics of the situation. The uh, Samuel Henrik Schwab was a German astronomer. Um, he actually discovered the solar cycle through his extended observations of various sunspots throughout the globe. Um, it was determined, and it's actually current with NASA, and midday you have which is when the wavelengths of the sun is at the shortest distance to the earth. Um, it's also the highest point in the sun when the sun reaches the highest point. Um, being right around, it's reported between 1300 and 1367 joules per second meter squared, which is the same as power. So they use this a lot for solar powered um, applications. Uh, the irradiant, er, irradiance is also known as solar isolation. Um, it's the amount of light energy from one thing hitting the square meter of another each second. There's four types of solar irradiance whenever they take into consideration. The one that I'm focusing on is the one that I 
solely focused on, which is why there is some error into this project. The direct irradiance, which is also known as the direct normal, um, it's measured at the surface of the Earth at a given location with the surface element perpendicular to the sun. Um, we also have the tolar, total solar irradiance, which is the collectiveness of, um, you got your diffuse and your global and your direct normal. Uh, your tolar, total solar irradiance is the measure of solar power over all wavelengths per square meter. Um, and that's the incident on the Earth's upper atmosphere. Um, it's per se, your cloud coverage that's being reflected back into the atmosphere. That's known as your reflective scattering. Um, your diffuse of horizontal irradiance, which is a collectiveness of um, any cloud coverage that is not omitted back into the atmosphere. It, it, it is going to be your radiation at Earth's surface from the light scattering. Um, your global horizontal irradiance is your total irradiance from the sun on a horizontal surface on the Earth. And they use this equation, their global horizon, or the, yeah, the glo global horizontal irradiance equaling the direct horizontal irradiance plus the direct normal irradiance times your cosine of whatever angle that sun's position is at that given time with respect to the Earth. And then also you had to include uh, energy into this to actually get a more in-depth understanding of just how powerful our sun is um, and how much it furthered my project. <laughs> um, energy can never be created nor destroyed. That is a law. Um, this equation that I have derived was your total energy equals your solar irradiance times the area, which is your affected area um, depending on your mirror or your reflective surface. Um, your Then from there, it would probably be easier just to go to my PowerPoint or my Excel from here, pull that up. All right. So from here, your mirror radius. Sure. Okay, so um, I just took into account that the basic area being a starting at a two meter, um, two meter or two meter radius, and then from this, I was able to calculate the radius of a given circle um, to be twelve point five six six four, and that's meters squared. And that's the area. So that's the, uh, the, t the, the head is the, the heading is the, um, above the table is the, uh, the energy? Yes. Over there in the, the total energy received. Okay. And, and then, uh, we'll, okay. Yes. Um, your, my solar concentration, this is my, um, this goes back into my um, finding the foci and the foci link. And um, the concentration, I found solar concentration, and that's per mirror radius. The only thing that is not consistent with this is for every radius, it has its own data. Because um, I didn't take into consideration of using just so one the, element. Uh, the first column is the, uh, it's like the curvature. Yes. In a way. Yes. And so the, the, the number, what would it refer to? Two, four, six. What was it? I'm sorry. The, the first column, what, what are those numbers uh, specifically? The uh, 
numbers in the first column is the it's one divided by four times my f, which is my um, distance. So the distance from the from focus to to the outside to the mirror itself to the um, well, it probably doesn't, doesn't matter that much. It's just uh, so. So is it uh, so the bigger distance is it means that the the mirror is more more curved. Yeah, more. No, wait a minute. You said, you said the the mirror is circular. Yeah, I used the. Um, I mean, if it's so the um, or you where is the size of the mirror? I took the the mirror radius. So, but it is is it is it cut out of? So, is it the radius of of the open of, of the opening of the of the mirror? Is it? Yes. Yes. Right, so, because because the opening is circular, but the shape is not a sphere. It is so. It's like behind. It's like the uh, par yes. parabolic par 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 shape. Yeah, it's from head to tail. So then, the bigger distance is the uh, the mirror has larger area, right? Correct. Yes. And and then the concentration per unit of area will be lower then because the, the opening is the same as the front. Yes. Okay. Correct. And then um, yeah. yeah. And then basically the um, I'm sorry, I lost track of thought. <laughs> um, Let me see. Let me get back on track here. So I calculated the area. Um, with the area, you, I took the the radius of the mirror times 3.14 r to calculate the larger areas. And then, how do you find the area if it is a parabolic uh, mirror? Then you need a formula for the parabolic surface, which is, is that, I mean, do you know what that is? I, um, I don't know. It's, yeah, I have it, it's in my papers, but I don't have it in here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but my solar isolation would remain constant, because this is just, this is basically depending on your radius of your, your mirror size. Um, and this is high point midday. And then your time, for every three seconds, you're emitting uh, 4,100, around 4,100 joules per meter squared, which is your total energy received, which would be your, your effective energy times your area radius times your, the time frame in order to get your total energy received, which is your energy equals your ir irradiance times your area, and then from there you can derive the derivative of the E prime equaling your E times your um, however many mirrors that you plan on having for your army. So um, if for every 10 mirrors or shields, reflective surfaces, I believe they use bronze and um, copper for their reflectives, what I read. For every 10, for every 10 mirrors, you would emit all approximately 244 degrees Celsius, which would be your 471 or 472 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, if you would, for every... So, so do, you, do, you, do you just multiply the, uh, uh, the energy by, by the number of shields? So, so every shield yes. is like a mirror. Right. And I use the E prime equals your total energy times your N, which would be your number of your shields. Um, it's said that anything over, well it's known, that anything over 593 degrees Celsius is 
in the process of charcoal um, or is charcoal. If we change this for like in my PowerPoint, at nine seconds, the, um, there's almost a whatever that meter, let me see, your area for that given time has already started to catch fire. This is whenever your um, wood would ignite and causing damage. Uh, anything more than nine seconds, it's, I mean, it almost triples in heat. So the actual ability to cause a hole is plausible um, whether or not he used that because to me if he if it was a success back then then it I think it would carry out in war defense tactics now but um, and then from this so you're saying that is it plausible or is it not plausible um, or is it too 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 hard to do? <coughs> so it's hard to believe that it's so so good what you're saying? It, it's, I mean, the data is there. It's just that you have so many different things that would affect you. Got, um, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, if you could have done it, then people probably would use it, but right. since then, a lot. And then, uh, two, where his workings wasn't documented for 350 years, there's lost information in between them. Um, and then, this is... At the bottom, at the... Uh, that, 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 uh, uh, so above, so, so how did you translate energy into temperature? Uh, for every joule, okay. this is a given constant okay. uh, for degrees Celsius, and I use this to actually take the total energy received and transfer it into degrees Celsius. So and then what could make diff so that, that's a direct computation, but it might be taken into account uh, how reflective the surface itself is. Correct. So, but, uh, so you just assume that, uh, to keep it simple, not going into that detail. Right. No, I didn't go into any various surfacings. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I calculated your degrees Fahrenheit mm -hmm. for more of an ideological standpoint. Um, anything, the 20, it would basically, I calculated it would be close to 12 mirrors, and that is going off of a, Let's see, it would be around five meters for your mirror radius, which is 15 feet. Okay. It's a rather big mirror. Um, 15, about 15 shields would actually ignite the burning process. Um, if we were to change the time constraints of day, it's reported that in the mornings, right as the sun's peaking is the furthest away from my constraints was that we were on one side of the globe and at the uh, sun's or the horizon as the sun was coming up would be, it's around 280. So if we t change the time of day, then it would, change all of our, it would change our solar isolation of course, but the time that it would take to actually have an effect on the burn process would be actually longer. So, and that's without any cloud coverage. So you have to take into consideration of multitudes of things. Even just a bird flying through your, through the actual ray itself, your um, incident ray would affect your burn time. So there's a lot of time, or there's a lot of constraints that kind of make this seem like it's not um, I think the main constraint is not really a ray as much as it is a, so the, the ship has to be in the focus. Right. So then it means that the, the constraint is that your you're cutting your shields out of a mirror, and that is a uh, kind of, but that mirror has to be a big one, otherwise you will be burning your your feet in front of you, right? Exactly. So if you like a mirror like this, 
then you're burning it right here. So to 500 feet away, you have to like like almost straight mirror. Well, if you cannot even tell the difference, probably right. Right. Really challenge that. Um, I'll get back to this PowerPoint. And then of course here I used my given constant of my joule to calculate the actual degree Celsius, mm -hmm. <coughs> which was about 733 degrees Celsius, which in turn calculates to about 1351 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, these are the, I just took the average burn for the woods um, from oak to poplar, uh, cypress, all those. And then again with this, there's prolonged burning rates depending on the density of the wood, um, all that consideration. So I just took the average of all woods. So the wood heats up to approximately 100 degrees Celsius before it is igniting. Whether how long it takes to reach that 100 degrees Celsius depends on whether or not um, actually the makeup of the wood or the specific heat rating. So they would have to have positioned the whole or the area of infliction high enough on the boat to keep the constant water flow from um, basically boiling up the reflected ray would end up causing the water to heat and between 300 to 600 degrees Celsius, the burning takes place by 40 to 50 percent, which means that it is ignited and it is burning. Um, anything over the 593, as I said before, does turn wood to charcoal. Um, more than likely, they did, if he used this, then he did deplore another defense mechanism to actually have a better counterattack with all the mm -hmm. things. And here's all my references that I pulled from uh, books that I've read um, as far as that. And then I didn't actually get to do a live demonstration for the sake of Drinko and my forgetfulness. So I actually had just pulled one from YouTube, which is actually. Um, well, that is uh, OK. What is it? It's parabolic. It's a satellite dish, which is what I was going to use. Oh, what is it that the, the wrong way curved this way? That way. I don't know. I didn't get to do it. <laughs> so it might just be the way the image is. Like if you look at it from the right side, it looks like it's curved inward, but if you look at it from the left, it looks to be curved outward. Well, I thought it was just straight from the side, and it's like a like a like a lens almost on one, bit. or is it? Just me. It Oops. might just be the picture. Uh, if yeah, I move to the inside, it's the bright inside. It's actually on the inside. It's not it's sticking out. It's only on the. It's so uh, so what, 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 what was their conclusion? So my it's conclusion. The, it looks like it. Yeah. Um, this is actual. I can speed through this video, so it's not. So at one.
Thanks, Mom. Thank okay. you. Questions, please. <laughs> it's a tough audience. <laughs> um, on your Excel file, were there um, level in green? Does that mean that means it's successes, right? Yes, those are successes. Um, like I said, these mirror shields can actually go down to approximately 15 shields before once the ignition takes place. Now they actually, I did forget to say, um, in India they use the same concept, but they don't accredit any of. Archimedes, it's a um, solar furnace they use for crematories. And, um, which <laughs> I found kind of interested. It's huge. It's, um, I think it's 200 meters. And it, I mean, it's huge. It's humongous. Um, they use it because of the death toll being so large that they can just instantly ignite and it would just being in the lot of body then right. at the same time. But it uses the same science, the same mathematics and everything that Archimedes would have used back then. Is I find it to be plausible, employable, but I find that he would also need a counterattack way back. In perfect conditions to actually be able to use it. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe you have a good army, and then you, they just you can just move them like uh, command them, and they <laughs> will move around and then hold. But human error when trying to aim the sun. Well, I mean, if if you teach every uh, train every soldier to point his uh, shield at the at the ship. Well, I mean, it's it possible because you know with the sun rays are reflecting on like a reflective surface. Like uh, what about watch, some kind of uh, aiming device? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like on top of the shield or the inside shield. of the shield, and you aim at the like a little tube, and you with that little tube you point it at the at the ship. Yeah. Well, one thing that I, yeah. if he used, because um, I was going to actually use satellite dish and aluminum foil, yeah. so where yeah. it would reflect. Um, but I was what going was to test. This, yeah. uh, he used a satellite dish. Oh, this this yeah. basic it was based off of aluminum foil. So those little things, what what were they? Look, it looked like uh, you know one of those in a disc attack. Yeah, he used um, he used in his video little pieces of shattered mirror. Okay. And reflected it that way. Yeah. But also that that's a, uh, the mirror is already parabolic. You can just as well right. catch anything and it will work. But those uh, pieces were not curved, right? Exactly. Those little pieces. So just, just so once again, those shields could have been not, not necessarily curved. But um, whenever I would have done my demonstration, the thing that I wanted to do was actually have I had a uh, sheet of aluminum that I was going to use first, and then hook a vacuum to the back of it and change the focus of it to see if it would just how far and how near I could do it to get it to employ. Okay. 